Welcome. Okay, let's talk through this classwork using statistics. I'm going to be using two websites, a random choice generator, and the class spreadsheet where we'll record our data. So we'll use these later on. Now today's classwork is designed to provide an example of one way in which statistics are used in a real life setting. We'll be using statistics to help us assess a court case, evaluating patterns in the data to distinguish between discrimination and random chance. Now this classwork also illustrates some large concepts we'll encounter this semester, including using descriptive statistics, simulating data, and evaluating probabilities obtained from sampling distributions. I know that all sounds like a bunch of gibberish right now, <laughs> but hopefully by the end of this course, that makes sense. Now the goal today here is for you to see a full example of how we can use statistics in the social sciences to help answer questions we have and to consider the logic behind many statistical analyses. Discrimination or random chance. In the year Robert Martin turned 54, the Westpaco Corporation decided to downsize. They laid off more than half of their engineering department, including Robert Martin. Later that year, he sued Westpaco, claiming he had been laid off because of his age. A major piece of Martin's case was based on a statistical analysis of the ages of the Westpaco employees. Now, this case is not about age. It's about discrimination. It's about an employee fighting back against what he sees as an unfair treatment. If you're fired from a job, maybe you weren't very good at it, or maybe you were just unlucky. But on the other hand, maybe it was because someone thought you were the wrong gender, or skin was the wrong color, or you looked too young or too old to be in that position. The question is, how do you know? So while the use of statistics alone can't prove discrimination, Statistics can provide evidence by detecting patterns that are consistent with the practice of discrimination. So let's look at one department of the Westpaco company. They had 10 hourly workers. The ages range, or sorry, the ages arranged from youngest to oldest were 25, 33, 35, 38, 48, 55, 55, 55, 56, and 64. Now the three workers who were laid off were ages 55, 55, and 64. So we can visualize these two distributions of people, those that were laid off and those that were retained. So we can see the ages listed along this number line at the bottom. 25, 33, 35, and so on. Okay. And the top distribution here shows us the ages of the three employ employees who were laid off. So if we're looking at these dots, that represents 155, 55, and 64. Now, this type of data visualization is called a dot plot because you simply place a dot in the distribution at a certain value of the data point. If there are repeat values, as you can see right here, then we stack those dots one on top of another. So when we see a lot of dots stacked up, that means there are a lot of, uh, I guess, people or items or, you know, cases at that particular value. So we can also summarize these distributions. So for example, <laughs> we could try to condense the data into a single number called a summary statistic. Now one possible summary statistic we may consider is the average or the mean age of the three workers who lost their jobs. So here we can see the three workers were 55, 55, and 64. And just for fun, let's, I verified it before, but let's do it again just for fun. 
So 55 plus 55 plus 64 gets us to 174. And then since there are three of them, we are going to divide by three. And we can say the average age of those three people who were laid off was 58. So to obtain the mean, as we can see, just to kind of backtrack and explain what I did there, um, we add the data points together. In this case, we have these three data points. Then divide that sum that you get by the number of data points that we added up. In this case, that was three. So we can see again, the average age for the employees who were laid off was 58. Okay, now I want you to take a moment to practice putting some meaning onto those numbers. So what do the 55, 55, and 64, what do those numbers represent or stand for? What is the three in our equation stand for? And then what does this 58 mean for us? Like what does it represent or stand for in regards to the case, the problem that we're looking at? So go ahead and pause for a minute and write down your answers to number one. Now I want you to check out the data, but be careful not to jump to any conclusions. So consider, what's your opinion about the Westpaco data that you've seen? These 10 values and the three people who are laid off. Do you suspect discrimination? I'd like you to consider both sides. So what are some reasons, based just on the data, that you have for suspecting discrimination, right? We don't know anything else about these people except their ages. So if you were just looking at these age distributions, what are some reasons from that data are there that you could argue that, yeah, I suspect there might be discrimination happening? Then I also want you to consider what are some reasons, again, just from the data, that you have for not suspecting discrimination? So think about it from both sides. And then, is it possible to have gotten this particular pattern of data, right, that we saw, if they had simply chosen three people completely at random to fire? If they just totally randomly chose three people, is it possible that we could see this pattern of data? So go ahead and pause and consider those questions and write down your answers to number two. All right, now let's read this dialogue. I know it's kind of cheesy, bear with me. Um, so I'm going to read out both parts, the Martin Sympathizer who kind of supports that claim of discrimination, and the Westpaco sympathizer, who is really worth supporting. No, it just happened by random chance. Okay, so Martin sympathizer. Look at the pattern in the data. All three workers laid off were much older than the average age of the retained workers, 58 versus 41.4. That is clear evidence of age discrimination. Westfaco sympathizer. You know, it is totally possible to have just fired three people at random and to have their average age be 58. Besides, you're only looking at 10 workers total and only three positions were eliminated. Just one small change and the picture would be totally different. Martin, what do you mean? Westfaco, imagine just three people were randomly fired. The 25-year-old could have been fired instead of the 64-year-old. For example, the actual data, 25, 33, 35, 38, 38, 55, and 56, versus the imagined data, 33, 35, 38, 48, 55, 56, and 64. See just one small change, and now the average age of those that were fired, which is 45, 
is lower than the average age of those that were retained, 47. Martin, of all the possible changes, you pick the one most favorable to your side. Some substitutions would have made the averages look even worse. For instance, if you kept one of the 55-year-olds but fired the 56-year-old, why not compare what actually happened with all of the other possibilities? Westwick what do you mean? Martin, okay, so start with 10 workers and pick three at random. Do this over and over and see what typically happens. Then we can compare the actual data with what those, you know, hypothetical data look like. Westwick Fine, let's do it. Now go ahead and consider if you pick three of the 10 ages, 25, 33, 35, 38, 48, 55, 55, 55, 56, and 64, if you pick three of those 10 at random, do you think you're likely to get an average age of 58 or greater? Right, so consider all the possibilities. Do you think that that's likely that you would get a mean average age of 58 or higher? And then why or why not? If you think it's likely, why? If you think it's unlikely, why? And further, if the probability of getting an average of 58 or higher turns out to be small, I want you to think, does that favor Martin and discrimination? Or does it favor Westpico and random chance? All right, so if you think about it, we say, okay, the chances of getting an average age of 58 or greater were very small. What does that mean about the case? What would you conclude and why, why not? All right, and it's okay if some of these questions are hard right now. <laughs> I just want you thinking about it and considering. Okay, now as a class, let's figure out whether it's likely or unlikely to get an average age of 58 years or greater if you choose three workers at random, right? So basically, remember, where did this 58 come from? Like, why do we keep focusing on this average of 58 or greater? Well, that's what really happened, right? In the real data, we saw there was an average age of 58, right? Which we consider, wow, that seems a little old <laughs> compared to the ones who weren't laid off, right? So we want to know what we saw happen in the real world is that likely to happen or unlikely to happen if we're just choosing people at random, right? So we're going to do this exercise to try to help us figure that out. So we'll start by having you simulate your data individually. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. And then later we'll look at all of our data put together. So that's why this classwork is split into two parts. So we can first collect our data and then once we have a good chunk of it, then we can start looking at it and discussing it. So here's what you're going to need. You are either going to need to tear up a piece of paper into 10 small pieces, right? That's option one if you want to do the, uh, the old school way, right? Option two is the digital way would be to use something like this website that I posted a link to for a random choice generator, right? So either have 10 small pieces of paper that you can mix around and pick from or have another way of generating those, those choices, right? So on each of those 10 pieces of paper, you're going to write the ages of the 10 workers in the department. So put one of those ages on each of the 10 pieces of paper. Now the equivalent, let me just move that over. The equivalent here on my digital version is I put 
those 10 ages, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, as the 10 different lines on my choice generator. So each of these lines is acting as a little piece of paper with an age on it. So once you've got your 10 things, your 10 things to choose from either paper or for a generator, then first we're going to start by creating a model of chance process. So what I mean by that, the instructions that are there is, okay, we're, this is a chance process because we're just doing it at random, right? If you've written all your ages down, I want you to mix those little pieces of paper up where you can't see the, the numbers on them and then just pick three out. And I'm going to have the computer do that for me. So choose on this one, I'm going to have it choose three pieces of paper and I want it to choose randomly. And it chose for me, for me, my answer for this 5A would be 25, 55, and 64. Those were the three that I chose at random. Yours, of course, will probably very likely be different from my numbers here. Okay. So go ahead and mix up your ages, draw out three. Those represent the three who were being laid off and record those ages in 5A. Next, we're going to compute a summary statistic, right? So a summary statistic, like we said, is, is a way of trying to kind of represent multiple pieces of data with just one value, like here's my summary. So we're going to compute the average or the mean of the three numbers in your sample. And I'd like you to do that to one decimal place. Okay. So, Compute the average or the mean of the three numbers in your sample. So I'm going to pull up my calculator to do this, right? Uh, you are encouraged to make use of calculators to help you because our human brains can make mistakes sometimes, right? So I encourage you, use a calculator. It's not cheating in any way. It's a tool. Right, so in this case, we're going to use this tool so we hopefully don't mess it up. So we're going to add together the three ages from A. So yours will be different than mine, but mine, I have 25 and 55 and 64, 144. So add together your three ages, and then we want to divide by the number that we of things that we just added together, which was 3. So again, so for me, it comes out to 48. So you can include as much detail as you wish in these. These notes are really, these classwork notes are really for you. I'm not going in and reading every answer and making sure, you know, that you got everything right. It's really a place for you to keep track and work along and, and to keep your reflections on the work too. So if you want to write it all out, what you just did, 25 plus 55 plus 64 equals 144. I know these things can be kind of hard. Like going from the uh, on paper to strictly digital can sometimes be a pain with the statistics stuff because I really want to like draw things and write things out in equations and that doesn't always translate well. But so here I'm just writing for myself um, what I did and I could be more explicit if I want and you know get out my character map I guess and, do, and say divide by three or whatever right so that's up to you. Now and then just record your at least record that average that you get on 5b. So now here we could gather the data from our whole class, right? If usually if we're doing this face to face, we're all in one big classroom doing this together, mixing our pieces of paper and pulling out three and then finding out what, you know, what did you get? So I want you to imagine that we are doing this all together instead of, you know, everyone at their own pace on their own time when they can. So if we're doing this all together as a class, we want to look at okay look at all the results that we just got and we want to determine 
what percentage of the class happened to randomly draw a sample with an average age of at least 58? So how many people had a sample that came out like the actual data, right? How many people did that happen for? Now, since we're all working at different times in different locations and it's not easy to just share our answers right now collectively, uh, we'll go ahead and skip 5C and 5D, although you may want to just think about them, right? So do you think that there would be a lot of people who ended up with an average of 58 or greater? And then based on what you think, what is that? Does, do you think that makes it look suspicious, like discrimination or not suspicious, like random chance? Right, so I don't expect you to, to know these answers. I just want you kind of thinking about it. So we're really thinking about statistics is very much like a, a way of thinking about things. It feels a little backwards at times, and that's okay. Um, so we're just starting to think in this new way. So how many do you think got it? Is that likely or unlikely? And then what does that mean to the big picture? So, moving on to number six, even if we considered, let me get rid of this, so even if we considered all of our hypothetical samples together, right, so there are about 30 people in each of my statistics sections, so um, that's really only about 30 hypothetical samples or so, right, 30 simulations of pick three people at random to fire. So it would be better to see more data. That's a theme we're going to see in statistics is we want to see more data. <laughs> um, because the more data you have, the less wrong you probably are, right? The more information you have. So it would be nicer to see more data than just 30 of these simulations. So we're going to use technology to help us visualize what is happening more precisely. We're going to call this, of course, a simulation because we're not really picking three people at random to fire over and over and over again, right, at, at some company. We're just, okay, what if, right, it's a simulation. It's it, Here's a way that you could randomly choose three people to to fire and then let's see what does that look like okay so once again let's try to figure out whether it is likely or unlikely to get an average age of 58 or greater like what really happened if you choose three workers at random to lay off okay so to do this we are going to be using the spreadsheet in the Google Drive all right, so these names may be different from, from what you see on yours, but at the top you should see that I have a line for my data. So I want you to go ahead and open the spreadsheet. It should be, if everything is working properly, fingers crossed, <laughs> um, you should be able to input your data in, but you should not be able to like mess up stuff in the other cells. I tried to lock everything down so you can really only put your data in and not, you know, overwrite some of the functioning and stuff that's already been put into the spreadsheet. So I think we're safe. Fingers crossed. I'll always keep, a, keep an eye on it anyway. So once you have the spreadsheet open, I want you to look on the left-hand side in that column A, that first column, and look and find your name. So it may be your name on the roster, or it may be the name that you um, said in your getting to know you survey that you prefer to go by. So take a look for that. And then once you find your name, here's mine right at the top, then I'm going to enter my data in row four only. All right, so I'm not gonna enter any numbers in any row other than row four. So for you, if you're Candace F, you're only going to enter your data in row 12, right? Okay. So, just to show you this data file a little better, 
so we see our names and then there are spaces for each of us to do 10 different samples. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and you can do the same thing. I'm going to use the ages from 5A as my sample one, as my first sample, my first simulated sample. So what were my ages again? 25, 55, and 64. So I'm going to put in 25, 55, and 64. And again, if everything's working, hopefully all these functions are working properly, then we can say, see that the mean or average age of my first sample was 48, which is good because that's what I put down. So you can go ahead and take your sample one from 5A and put it in for your row. And then we're going to do this again and again and again. Right? So we're using our model of a chance process, this randomly picking three. You mix the ages, you draw out three workers to be laid off, record the three ages, right? So if you, you're going to do it again and record your next three ages as sample two, the next sample in the Google spreadsheet. And then the spreadsheet will automatically compute our summary statistic, right? The average or the mean of each of our samples. So I want you to go on and repeat this mix, draw, record process until you have filled in all 10 samples on your row in the spreadsheet. So you're going to have 10 groups of three numbers, right? And again, whether you want to do it the, the uh, retro way with the pieces of paper, or if you want to use an online random choice generator, that is up to you, right? We just need a random choice process. So uh, once you've filled in all 10 of your samples in the spreadsheet, then you are done with part one of Classwork 2. So to confirm that you completed it and to receive credit, please make sure that you submit a response indicating what row you recorded your data in. So for me, I would go on to this Classwork Part 1, and my submission would be, I have put in my, you know, you don't have to write it all out, <laughs> but basically what you're saying is I confirm I've done the classwork and I've put my data for my 10 samples into the spreadsheet in this row, right? What, which row did you put it in? Just so I can keep an eye on things um, and make sure that you get credit for actually doing this activity. Okay. So happy uh, simulating and sampling. And once everyone's had a chance to kind of, or at least most people have had a chance to put their data in where there's actually going to be something worth seeing, then we're going to move on with part two where we talk about, okay, how do we interpret this data that we just collected? Okay, so I will see you next time.